The Center for Healthy Communities is excited to introduce our YouTube channel, starting with our first series, Putting a Lid on COVID-19. Our channel will feature a series on health and social justice related topics that are relevant to our community. We have made our videos available in English, Spanish subtitles and closed caption to allow the inclusion and participation of our diverse community. Our first series, we're gonna start off with debunking myths about COVID-19 with epidemiologist, Dr. Brandon Brown. Our first myth, when the pandemic first began, one of the most common myths was that COVID-19 was like the flu. Is this true? If not, what are some of the differences? Yes, so before the epidemic really took hold in the United States, many people, uh, including myself, did not know how contagious that it was, how fast it was spreading, and also we thought it might be similar to flu. And one thing to remember is that we can only work with the information that we have, and we did not have a full understanding of the viral transmission prior to early 2020. Um, one thing that is true is that the same prevention measures that we use for flu can be used for COVID-19. And while we now commonly refer to the pandemic as COVID-19, that's the disease and the virus is called severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2. But I'll use COVID-19 for simplicity. The next myth, you must be around someone that has the virus for longer than 10 minutes to get the virus. Is there a time period in which someone can be around an infected individual and not get the virus? Good question. There's no minimum time period um, for exposure to catch the virus. The virus can be spread by sneezing, by breathing, or by touching a surface with the virus on it. And it can only take a second to catch the virus. Conversely, if you use proper prevention measures and with those, you could be in the same environment with someone who is infected without ever getting infected yourself. Obviously, the longer you are exposed, the more likely you are to get infected with the virus. Next myth. Does heat kill COVID-19? Are hand dryers effective at killing the virus? And will the risk of getting the virus decrease as temperatures increase? Yeah, this is a question that a lot of people have. So hair dryers are actually not effective at killing the virus. So we've seen people going home after being potentially exposed and using a hair dryer on their skin. Um, this could be harmful for you. We know that the flu season starts in the colder months. This year it started uh, in October and it comes back each year. And experts expect that COVID-19 will do the same. Uh, we could look to countries with high heat and see that the viral transmission continues despite the high temperature. So we should not relax restrictions due to warm weather. In fact, with warm weather, uh, more people will be going to the beaches and in close contact with one another, which could lead to increased viral transmission in the second wave. Thank you. I think this was really interesting because since we live in a warmer client, climate, this was um, a question that was often asked from the community. Sure. Myth, drinking alcohol reduces the risk of infection. Is this true? Well, one thing that's true about alcohol is that alcohol-based sanitizers can kill the virus on surfaces, but there's no evidence that drinking alcohol reduces the risk of infection. Um, the fact that alcohol can kill virus on the outside of the body does not mean the same for the inside of the body. In fact, people believing uh, this myth that drinking alcohol kills the virus have died from alcohol poisoning, so it's very dangerous. Can you only get COVID-19 from someone who is exhibiting symptoms like coughing or sneezing, or can it be passed on unknowingly? It could definitely be passed on unknowingly, and people that have COVID-19 could be asymptomatic and pass it on to others. So people don't need to look sick or have any symptoms to have the virus. And this is why assuming that everyone has the virus and using general prevention measures and precautions is the best way to protect yourself. 
uh, symptoms don't immediately appear. It could show up anywhere from 2 to 14 days after exposure to the virus, which makes it difficult to know exactly where you were exposed and also for public health to do contact tracing and prevent uh, the further spread of infection. Oh, this next question is very controversial. COVID-19 is a government hoax and no precautions need to be taken. Yeah, this is a very popular myth uh, right now, particularly it's gained significant traction in the past week, particularly with the release of the uh, short film Plandemic, which highlights uh, conspiracy theorist Dr. Julie Mikovits, who says that the virus is being spread uh, intentionally by the government, and also that uh, wearing face masks actually activate the virus and make it dangerous for you. So we're living in an interesting period, and as time goes on, we're learning more about the virus, and people often look for a why when searching for an answer to things that happen to them. And right now, with many people hurting because they're losing their livelihood, their jobs, and also their lives, um, things seem out of control. So they're looking for an answer. Uh, we saw this search for meaning with vaccines and autism, and now we're seeing it here with COVID-19. So we need to be careful uh, with the news that we see. We need to practice our prevention measures. We need to wash our hands, wear face masks, uh, physically distance in public. Thank you. I really appreciate um, you providing a very comprehensive response to that hoax or that myth. Of course. <laughs> Here's another one. Only the elderly can get COVID-19. Is there a certain age group that is more vulnerable than others? Yeah, this, I've seen this question uh, come through a lot. So the short answer is anyone can get the virus. Anyone is vulnerable to the virus. Those who are elderly uh, may be more likely to be hospitalized with severe illness from the virus due to comorbidities and compromised immune system. But people who are elderly are no more or less likely to catch the virus itself compared to anyone else because um, just like the elderly and the young and um, people in between, everyone has the potential for exposure to the virus. So we all need to protect ourselves. Oh, this is my favorite. Home remedies and online recommendations like drinking hot liquids or taking vitamin C will reduce the risk of getting the virus. Can forms of alternative medicine cure or treat the virus like hot water, herbal medications, garlic, ginger. Do you have any additional tips to help reduce the risk of contraction? Yeah, so um, this is one uh, because we know that diet is called healthy for a reason. We all want to adhere to a healthy diet, drink plenty of water. Right now, there is no proof that sticking to a specific diet will prevent you from getting the virus. But if your immune system is healthy versus suppressed, you may be less likely to have severe symptoms from the virus. But there is no known home remedy or alternative medicine which can cure the virus at this time, despite um, store shelves kind of selling out of garlic and vitamin C and, and teas. So to reduce the risk of infection, we need to use the prevention measures that we have right now, washing our hands, avoiding touching your face with unwashed hands, sheltering in place at home when possible, uh, and using masks when going outside and keeping a physical distance between ourselves and others. So those are the things that we should be focusing on to prevent from getting the virus. Okay, lifting of the stay at home order and the reopening of many businesses means that we can go back to normal without taking any more precautions. Mm -hmm. So how should we transition into going back to work, school, or shopping? Yeah, this is an important one. So many public health experts locally and nationally are saying that loosening restrictions to is going to cause the second wave of infection. Uh, we know that last week uh, people were no longer required to use masks 
and physically distance in public. And we already can see a difference in um, people in grocery stores and other locations with people not wearing masks or physically distancing themselves. So we just went into stage two of the governor's back to work plan. And we have to wait and see if this is going to lead to another surge of infections and in hospitalization. So it's going to just be important to move slowly for reopening the economy. That way we don't have to go back to sheltering in place along the way to getting to a full reopening. And I recommend that um, we use an abundance of caution instead of reflecting that everything is okay uh, and we don't have to worry anymore. So despite the fact that we are no longer, at least in Riverside County, required to use masks and physically distance. It's a good practice to do so to prevent the virus. That's a perfect lead in to our next question. If I wear a mask, I can be out for non-essential purposes or gather in groups as often as I want. Yeah, so, um, one thing that's really important to remember, which is why um, recommendations for using masks are usually paired with uh, physically distancing, is that masks are not 100% effective. And it also, the effectiveness of a mask depending depends on the type of mask. So an N95 versus a homemade mask, for example, might be different in preventing the virus. At minimum, uh, masks remind people to physically distance and prevent us from touching our face, which is very important in preventing the virus. And masks are meant to be used when going outside for essentials like food and other supplies. But at this point, uh, masks should not be used as a method of believing that you're safe when you go out and gather in groups uh, socially, uh, because a mask is not a bulletproof vest for the virus. Wow. Well, if I become infected with COVID-19, will I die? Um, what is the likelihood of death for an individual who is infected with COVID-19? Good question. So um, if you are infected with COVID-19, um, you may die. <laughs> the fatality rate is somewhere around 1.5%, um, which seems pretty low. Uh, and it may be higher or lower depending on the population, the setting, and how many people are truly positive for the denominator and kind of calculating the fatality rate. Because right now we don't actually know how many people um, have the virus, because not every person that has the virus is hospitalized or tested. But this does not mean that we should not worry this low um, fatality rate, because there have been over 80,000 deaths from COVID-19 in the United States alone far surpassing flu and deaths from heart disease and cancer. Um, heart disease and cancer are not contagious, but COVID-19 is, so we need to work to prevent the virus. Okay, can I take antiviral medications or antibiotics to prevent or cure COVID-19? And are there any medications that can prevent or cure COVID-19? Thank you. Yeah, this is an easy question because there right now are no medications that can prevent or cure COVID-19. There is one medication that has been shown to lessen the length of stay of people who have uh, been hospitalized due to COVID-19, but by then you already have severe symptoms. So right now there is no cure and there is no medication to prevent COVID-19. Okay. Well, I have pets, so can COVID-19 be transmitted through dogs and cats? And should pet owners be concerned about contracting the virus from their furry companions? Yeah, good question. I also have pets and I also worried about this. Um, so there are currently no cases of people getting the virus from their pets, but there are cases of uh, pets testing positive from the virus, which makes us think that they could have got it from their um, from their pet owners. So if you test positive and you are isolated at home, make sure that you're isolated not only from your family, but also from your pets as well. Keep them safe. <laughs> so if I feel ill, should I go to the emergency room immediately? 
What should you do if you think you're having symptoms of COVID-19? Yeah, it's a good question. So right now we do not recommend that you go to the emergency room if you believe you have COVID-19 or if you have symptoms of COVID-19. And the reason is because you could inadvertently um, expose others there to um, your virus upon your arrival. So what you should do is you should call ahead to your primary care provider, um, tell them about your symptoms or um, and from them, you can get instructions on, on what to do. And if you do end up going to the emergency room, please wear a mask, avoid touching your face, and use the same prevention practices that we've been talking about today. Thank you, Dr. Brown. That concludes our um, series of debunking myths about COVID-19. Really appreciate you taking the time to help us um, walk through these myths and give a clear understanding um, of what we should do moving forward to keep our families and ourselves healthy and safe during this time. Thank you again. Of course.